Village up at Battlefish and we are on the Intercoastal Waterway at Beach Boulevard. And uh, really nice of the house, but it is really windy here. It's like the wind's out of the northwest. Uh, it's going to be low tide here in a couple hours, so I'm going to head to my favorite spot in Cabbage Creek and see what we can find. I'm just the winter, so I should uh, stay comfortable, but uh, it wins, so we'll see how it goes today. Just throwing the crazy croaker as usual, so uh, let's see what we can get. I've also got submission fishing Mike Budo's uh, jigs. I'm gonna try a couple of those. That was pretty successful this week, Monday. Uh, so we'll see how we do. And as usual, thanks for joining and keep on watching. Appreciate it, thanks. Hello. So I'm fishing one of my favorite spots, Cabbage Creek, way back in uh, Ponte Vedra, Marsh Landing area. Uh, there's several creeks you can get into with a shallow boat. Uh, this happens to be one of them. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It is full of a lot of snags. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Um, no, got one. I advise you to All right. go in with caution. Uh, it's not hard to get stuck back there if you get a bigger boat and there's a lot of snags. In this creek and many creeks, you can kind of tell how deep it is by the slope of the bank at low tide. When it's real shallow slope like you see in the background there, uh, you can pretty much assume it's shallow all the way across or out pretty far. If the bank drops off sharply, uh, you know, vertical, then you could, and at low tide, uh, you can pretty much assume it's a little deeper. About 23 inches. I guess 20, 26, same as the other one. <laughs> yeah, baby. low tide so everything you see here is going to be totally covered up by high tide and you won't see it until you snag it so that's why uh, the advantage of the crazy croaker is again it, it does not snag very often and usually if you just get on the other side of the snag you can get it off um, it tracks shallow I believe the sunlight has a lot to, to play into uh, whether the fish sees it or not. As discussed in the podcast with Submission Fishing, I believe the fish hears the wagging tail of the paddle on the uh, crazy croaker with its lateral line which is like their ears and the uh, and once they hone in on it they see it a little bit of sunlight action and attack it one thing I forgot to mention is this water is extremely muddy and cloudy there's just zero visibility 
last two redfish you caught, this one and the other 26 inch year on Monday with Mike, um, had it pretty far down its throat. So, pretty much inhaled it. I'm just surprised with a foot of water, like we're in here, unless that I don't see any headwakes, I don't see any tails or backs coming out of the water. It's just uh, weird. Unless the fish are right in the middle all the time. And usually these redfish are working the shoreline. While this area is not new to me, I, uh, I do like to explore areas at low tide uh, when I know I can get my boat in there uh, so I can see what the stuff under the water looks like. It's a great time to uh, see what's exposed as far as structure. So, as you can see, we have a lot of structure in this creek. So this area of the creek does not have a deep spot, it's right now at high tide it's six feet, at low tide it's like two feet in the middle. So uh, it's a flat spot, there's a hole up ahead and then again at the T there's about a 15-16 foot hole. Um, and then it's pretty shallow the rest of the way if you go left. If you go right it's shallow all the way. I've only gone a mile or a mile and a half to the right. But I've gone all the way to the dead end road on the left before. This is Marsh Landing, Ponte Vedra, a little sliver of St. John's County that sneaks up along the shoreline here. Multi million dollar houses. Fishing in people's backyards. Which is odd. I've actually talked to some of the people out here once in a while. Yeah, you can see the speed of my retrieve. And this is this reel is a new reel. This is a six to one retrieve ratio so it's faster than the five to ones I've been using it's a little faster retrieve so I'm slowing down a little bit compared to what I usually retrieve it's a Daiwa Certate I believe that's how you pronounce it reel is sealed um, Power knob, like it so far. It's a uh, rig with 30 pound braid, 40 pound brown, big game Berkeley mono, tied with an FG knot, and the crazy croakers tied on with a loop knot. And again, for those of you who are kind of new to my channel, I bend the I open up that hook um, so it's almost parallel with the belly of the croaker. When you get it, it's going to be pointing at the at the eye. Uh, you need to open that up. And every fish I've been catching, this is stuck right in the roof of their mouth. Very easy to get out. Easy to get the pliers on there and pop it out. Um, so there's the loop knot. I use about four or five feet of uh, leader, mostly because if I change lures, you lose about six to eight inches of line every time you change a lure. I rarely change though. I've got six rods here, I'll rig differently. Actually, i got three rods now with um, 
crazy croakers on them. I don't know why. And I don't know why I've got all the other baits because fishing this creek, there's just too much debris, palm tree roots, palm tree stumps, um, literally in the middle of the canal, middle of the creek. And it's almost impossible to run a jig through here on the bottom like you would normally do. So the swim baits just don't don't get snagged typically unless you run over a log or something. And they're there here to here too. Um, I think I'm gonna run these videos together so you'll see some of the super low tide it was day before yesterday when I was fishing. Um, and all this debris exposed by the low tide that is right now because it's high tide all underwater and this cast nice this is a tsunami they call the backwater seven foot two medium rod um thirty dollar rod it throws beautifully $30 rod on a with a $400 reel. Absolutely beautiful. No wind. Sun is up. This is a little feeder creek that I've gone all the way up on, and I've caught some reds way back where the I can't even turn my boat around uh, back there. Another one. Oh, what's this? Yeah, this is a small one. Oh, that's a little one. These videos are not in order. This is the uh, first fish I caught, uh, not as far up the creek. Got one. Uh, where my boat is, it's about 10, 12 feet too. deep. Uh, but straight ah, ahead, where that dock is, it gets real it narrow, good. and you have to go very close to the floating dock. Uh, there's a very narrow spot you can get your boat through. Uh, don't go through the middle because you'll get stuck on a sandbar. Yeah, nice one. Like usual, Just get out. Not hurting them. There we go. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go kind of green. Yep. That's why I use heavy, heavy line. Shape. Stretch out here. He is 26.
here I'm working myself out of the creek and I'm in the much wider spot. Uh, it's about 12, 15 feet deep in the middle. Uh, pretty shallow at the edges though, you know, zero to three feet, about oh, eight, man. nine feet out. Be careful in those shallow areas. There's a lot of stumps from uh, palm trees and logs and things in the shallow areas. So I uh, kind of stay out so I don't hit it with my trolling motor and cast in kind of on a di diagonal to the sh to the bank. He is yeah, 19 and a half. That was a weird bite. This is one of two uh, curves right at the beginning of Cabbage Creek from the Intercoastal Waterway. This is the second curve. And uh, the front of your boat can be in a foot of water and the back of your boat can be in 15 feet of water. So uh, that's how much of a drop off there is. So if you work that drop off, there'll be fish hanging mm -hmm. in the shallowest part of that drop off. Came back and got it. <laughs> All right. You feisty booger. Stay hooked. Ooh, he's a big one. He's a big one. in the basket. is 25. <sighs> Low tide. And then coming out of the creek, uh, picked up uh, a trout. Trout. 